Let's find the antiderivative of secant x to the fifth power. The procedure that we're going to use is going to work for any secant to an odd power. Then once you have that, you can do any secant to an odd power times tangent to an even power. Point out how to do that at the end. Now, in our special case, what we're going to do. We're going to have integration by parts, and we're going to have to use it twice. There are going to be two features you want to pay attention to. For the first feature, if we give our antiderivative a name, so we'll call it i, when you apply your integration by parts, what's going to happen is you'll have your i on the left-hand side. As you go through the integration by parts, you're going to get another i on the right-hand side. So if you collect all your i terms on the left-hand side, you're going to have your answer. OK, for the second feature, after you work through feature 1, what will happen is on your right-hand side, you're going to be left with finding the antiderivative of your secant to a power that's 2 less. So this won't get us directly to our answer. We're going to have to keep working our way down by 2s until I get to antiderivative of secant. And that you're supposed to have memorized. OK, so let's proceed. Now, if we're going to do integration by parts, remember we're hunting for something in our integrand that I can take the integral of. So if I have secant x to the fifth power dx, okay, your candidates are either going to be secant x dx or secant squared dx. Okay, we'll go with the secant squared dx. That's going to go straight to, when you take the antiderivative of, you're going to get tangent x. Now, that's going to leave us with u equal to secant cubed x. Here we want to take its derivative with respect to x, so that's going to be the chain rule. So I'll have du equals 3 secant squared x. Derivative of the inside, which is secant, is going to be secant x, tan x, and then we have a dx. So this collapses to 3 secant cubed x, tan x, dx. We apply integration by parts. So first step, multiply down the diagonal. It's going to give me a secant cubed tangent. Then I'm going to take indefinite integral as we move up this column, and then we subtract. So we're going to have minus, OK, integral 3 secant cubed, tan squared dx. OK, our next move, I want to take out the tan squared. So I can replace that with secant squared minus 1. Now, I never memorize this. I just remember cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Divide through by a cosine squared. That's going to give you a 1 plus sine squared over cosine squared, which is tangent squared is equal to 1 over cosine squared, which is secant squared. Push the 1 to the other side. So tan squared is going to turn into secant squared minus 1. And now I can just start pushing through this minus 3 here. Now you'll note here, what are you going to get? For the first term, I'll have a minus 3, OK, any derivative of secant to the fifth power. So that's going to be i. So this is just going to be a minus 3i, as promised. OK, we have i showing up on the right-hand side. For the second term, what do we have? We have a minus 3, a minus 1, then any derivative of secant cubed. So here we see the second feature. We've pushed secant to the fifth down to secant cubed. OK, so collecting all that, we're going to get this line right here. So we push our minus 3i to the other side. And I get 4i equals this term plus 3 times this indefinite integral here, which we're going to solve for in the next step. So to collect everything, we have that our integral of secant to the fifth power, OK, 1 fourth secant cubed tan x plus 3 fourths this integral we're going to work out now. Now, for our second integration by parts, we don't change a thing except for the exponent. So I'll call i prime equal to integral secant cubed x. Go do integration by parts. So what do we do? dv is equal to secant squared x dx. Now I have u equals secant x. And then we just work it out. So v will be equal to tan x. du is going to be secant x tan x dx. And then we just apply integration by parts formula. So u times v is going to be secant x tan x. And then we integrate up this column, subtract. So what are we going to get? We're going to have integral secant x tan squared x dx. Then we can replace the tan squared with the secant squared minus 1, as before. 
it's gonna get us to here. And then you note again, we have I prime appears. And then over here, this is gonna be secant to power less by two. But note here, we know how to do secant x. So you go look that up. It's gonna be natural log of secant x plus tan x and absolute value signs. Okay, so we can push this I prime to the other side. And then that's gonna give me my answer for I prime. So I'll put a box around that. And then we're gonna take this box, this box, put everything together on the next board. That's gonna be our answer. We put I prime into I. We get our final answer as follows. Now, of course we wanna check our work. So we're gonna take the derivative. And then I wanna make sure that outcomes secant x to the fifth power. This is gonna be a big exercise in bookkeeping. So we do derivatives one at a time, and then we're gonna put the final answer as powers of secant. So for our first term, we're gonna have a product rule, and then we have a chain rule on the first item. So we'll get, okay, this will turn into three secant squared. Okay, derivative of secant is gonna be secant tangent, and then we have a leftover tangent. Derivative of tangent is gonna be secant squared. So we put everything together, what do we get? We get 3 fourths secant cubed tan squared plus 1 fourth secant to the fifth. Now, if I wanna put everything in terms of powers of secant, we'll use tan squared equals secant squared minus one. So that's gonna give me a secant to the fifth minus a secant cubed, and then we put in our 3 fourths. Okay, what's left over is a 1 fourth secant to the fifth. I can combine that with the first term, gives me a secant to the fifth minus three fourths secant cubed. So we'll call that one. Now, for our second term, we're gonna take the derivative. Here's just gonna be a straight product rule. So what are we gonna get? So this is gonna give me a secant tangent, then we have the leftover tangent, plus we have a secant, and then derivative of tangent's gonna be secant squared. So we have secant tan squared plus secant cubed, and then three eighths out in front of everything. Tan squared, again, we're gonna write it as secant squared minus one. So that's gonna give me a secant cubed minus a secant, and then we put the three eighths in. First and third terms, gonna give me three fourths secant cubed, then we'll have minus three eighths secant. For the last term, okay, you can note that this is the antiderivative of secant. So if it takes derivative, we expect to get secant back. If you work it out the long way, it's just gonna be a chain rule with your natural log. So we have the inside here, okay, natural log of whatever, take its derivative, you're gonna get one over whatever, the inside, times the derivative of the inside. So we'll get one over secant x plus tan x, then derivative of the inside, it's gonna be secant x tan x plus secant squared. Factor out a secant, and then the secant x plus tan x is cancel out. So we'll be left with a 3 8 secant x. Call that three. We take one plus two plus three. What do we have? Secant to the fifth minus three fourths secant cubed. We go to two, three fourths secant cubed. They're gonna cancel. And then we have a minus three eighths secant. And then if we go to three, we get a plus three eighths secant, so they cancel two. And what I'm left with is my secant to the fifth. So our work checks out. Now, with the procedure, computing the antiderivative of secant to an odd power. We can do the antiderivative of secant to an odd power times tangent to an even power. Final trick is gonna be, we eliminate all the tangents from the integrand using tan squared equals secant squared minus one. Because we have tan to an even power, that's gonna eliminate completely. So what's gonna be left is, we're gonna have secant squared minus one to a power times an odd power of secant. So if you work that out, that's just gonna be a sum of odd powers of secant. Then we can apply our procedure for secant to an odd power. Okay, as an example, take secant cubed, tan squared. Okay, we write tan squared as secant squared minus one. That's gonna give me secant to the fifth minus secant cubed. And then we saw how to get each of these. That's just gonna be our capital I minus I prime. Okay, in general, you had say tangent to the fourth, and that's gonna be a secant squared minus one quantity squared, and then you're gonna have a lot more work to do.